Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 599. Ooh, a uh, prog review. And today, what the fuck? Let's do another Pink Floyd. Uh, it's Wish You Were Here. Yeah. Um, thought I'd get it out of the way. Just get, just get it done. Red until 600. I, I do love Beach, and we can all stop. We all stop. Um, released 12th of September 1975. This is the band's ninth studio album. Just hit thumbs down now, all right? Let's not let's not fuck about. Thumbs it down. Just just thumbs thumbs down and walk away, because all you cretins love this record, and I I don't I don't like it. Uh, my opinion's different to yours. Ooh, ooh, oh no, oh different opinions. They're scary. Oh, I don't like different opinions. He should like this record if he's a true fan. Oh, he doesn't know anything. Etc, uh, etc. Et However, we shall carry on. Wish You Were Here is probably the last of that of those studio albums that I came across when I was like getting into Floyd. Seriously. I had never had any interest in it. No interest in it at all. Um, I don't know why, you know. I, you know, got you know Piper and Saucer, Full, and Medal, and all the all the other ones. And if my memory is correct, this is this goes back to about I don't know, eighty eight, eighty nine. It would have been about, would have been about an eighty nine, all right. So it's just the, the division bell, and I and I got that when it came out. But eighty nine. Is when I when I came across this, and the missus bought me a copy of it. She was she was away on a holiday uh, with her family, and she saw a copy and bought it for me. I think, or did she get it for? No, correction, she got it for me for Christmas. That was it. That sounds about right. 1980. 80, I, it was. I got it for Christmas on CD from the missus. It was a present, but it was the, the last of the Pink Floyd albums that I. Uh, Got into and because before that I just had no interest in it. I never ever really thought, oh, that's an album I must listen to. I don't know why. And so when I got the record and listened to it, I was pretty unimpressed, and I, and I remain, I remain un, unimpressed by it. I think it's probably one of the most overrated albums in history, and in Pink Floyd discography, I think it's incredibly overrated. Oh, this is this is gonna be a hard one. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone's gonna like this. Um, well, how so, Darren? How so when everyone gives it such a great rating? Well, first of all, Shine on Your Crazy Diamond parts one of one to five and six to nine are just, uh, just meandering, plodding, mawkish nonsense. It's overblown. Dribbly rubbish. That's it. I was I've never been comfortable with them milking the legacy of Sid Barrett. You know that. You know that. I think, you know, it was a great great shame what happened to him and I think they got a fucking nerve to make records about him. Of course I'm sure it was done all sincerely and with the greatest sincerity and belief. But you know, yeah, yeah, and that's without you know the story of Sid turning up whilst they were making this record. Ah, oh, I've been eating lots of pork chops, he says. Um, so yeah, I don't like Shine and Your Crazy Diamond. It's one of those songs that when they play it live, all the true Pink Floyd fans start weeping and bringing out their lighters and singing along, and I just just leaves me cold. Leaves me cold. <laughs> Cold, because I'm unfeeling, heartless human being. However, there are some good bits. It's like a, it's like you know there are some you know there's some good there's some good meaty bits in this shit sandwich. I shine on one to five and six to nine of the bread in this shit sandwich. Um, welcome to machine again. I I love the sentiment of it, and and some of it. Um, Kind of is a portent to material that will resurface on the wall. You know, if you listen to the lyrics and you know the way the character is expressed, 
you can you can hear themes that are, like I say are resolved on the wall. My problem with it again is it's overproduced. It's over. I just find it just overblown. It's it's that, you know the excesses of prog, whatever you want to call this. Um, I would have been more interested in a really stripped down version. Can you imagine a really quiet, almost you know mumbly, reflective, acoustic version of Welcome to the Machine? Really pulled back, quiet, you know, intimate. It would it would it would be mind blowing, and the lyrics would have much more impact, I think. But I just yeah, I find it plodding and all the sound effects and the whooshes and the whirs are just replacement for you know they're just a stand in for any kind of real emotional impact the song may might yeah might have had you know there's a lot of smoke and mirrors on this a lot of you know sound effects now they used you they used that on the previous album to great effect but this album you get the feeling that they're almost you know, it's that difficult second album, even though it's not technically their second album. <laughs> it's the second album after the after Dark Side of the Moon. However, things look up when you flip the record over and you have um, the song Have a Cigar, sung by the, the amazing Roy Harper. And it's good because when you hear Roy Harper do it, you know that, you know, this is a this is a proper vocalist. This this is none of your Roger Waters, David Davy, Dave Gilmore bullshit. This is a proper vocalist, and he really gets into. I like it. On the making of, uh, there is a making of documentary. There's a lot of there's a lot of rancor there, especially from Davy, 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 David Gilmore, who, you know, he he was. You get the feeling he was a bit upset by Roy Harper's present. It put his it put his little little nose out of joint somewhat. Uh, and the same in a lesser extent could be said of of, of Roger Roger Waters. Um, but yeah, Roy Harper's vo vocals make this for me, and again, it's a good. It's a, the lyrics also are absolutely spot on. It's a good examination and dissection of the music industry. By the way, which one's pink? You see, and that's it. That's all you need to know. It's the music industry filleted before your eyes. And then we have the title track "Wish You Were Here," which again is a lovely sing along. You know, but again, got to rely on detuned radio and effects and and stuff, rather than playing it straight because that's what they do now. It's all about effects. But again, it's probably the you know strongest track on the album, and one I have any time for. It's you know it's a, it's a good song. So really, there's only really two good songs on the record, um, and then it finishes with. with shine on again where it disappears up its own arsehole and that's it that's the album for me i really don't care for it that much i believe i listen i played it today i listened to it today and yeah get whilst you know it's yeah it's all right it's like it's like musical wallpaper for me it's almost it's almost an you know the shine on bits are almost ambient you know in that i don't pay any attention i pay no attention to them whatsoever uh, and I know there will be many of you ranting and raving um, me many of you will be very upset very very upset raving and drooling grunting and groaning um, I'm thinking that I've got to be crazy to say such things but I much prefer animals that comes after this you see this, eh, uh, mm, I just don't, uh, mm, I just don't get it. I don't, don't get it. It's not for me. It's not for me. Uh, in terms of rating, uh, I don't know. If I give it five, then you can't moan at me, can you? Because I've, I've given you my criticism, but then I can mess with your head. So I'm going to give it five have a cigars out of five, even though I really haven't got much time for it. And then, and then that's fucked you all, all your moaners up, isn't it? I fucked you right in the asshole because you can't, you can't, you can't say anything back to me because I've given it, I've given it full marks. It is a classic album. I, I'll give it that, but I don't like it. I don't like it. It doesn't speak to me. Too noodly, 
too fey, too, you know, just too much. Just too much. And not enough. See, again, they make make a lot out of very little on this record. Um, and that is that's it. I think you're you're gonna you're gonna hate this review, but that's the way it goes. That's the way the mop flops. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. And that's it, we're done. We're done. Um yeah, I mean, I'd, I've already done this on the immersion set and all that stuff, and the surround sound, and surround sound's great. It sounds lovely in surround sound. Very good. Very good. All those synthesizers and all that whooshy stuff. Very good. Very good in surround sound. The vinyl. Very good. Very nice. Very nice. The reissued one. I've done, I've done it. I feel like I've done it. But now we've put this one to bed once and for all. It's now put to, put to bed. I think I've done it. And that's it. There's only one more thing left to say, and you know what that is. That is engage. I need you to engage. I need you to tell me exactly why I'm wrong in the comments section. Tell me. Tell me. And if you're polite, your comment will remain. But if you're rude and use rude words and insults, then of course it will get deleted because that's the way it is. For this is not a democracy. This is not a place of you know of free speech. The only free speech here is my own. And with that. There's no more thing left to say, and that is prog on. <laughs>